They say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. I'm of course talking about New York, but the New York of today wasn't the New York of yesteryears. Hi, this is Jen from TTPM, and I'm here with New York 1901, a board game from Blue Orange Games. Now before we get into the gameplay, let's just give an overview of the great artwork that went into this game. From the back of the board to the game pieces, the artwork for this game really is beauty in itself. Now the idea of the game is that players are all acting as real estate developers in the early booming era of New York City. It's the time period when New York started to transform its skyline and it's up to you to make that happen. As the game says, your dear uncle has passed away and left you a small property in Lower Manhattan. It's your chance to start your real estate career and build bigger and better than your competition. To get started, each player selects a lot card from the open market and character cards to determine where they'll begin. Those character cards also feature a color token in the top corner to indicate the color you'll play. Each player is then dealt four worker tokens, one king token, 18 skyscraper tiles, three action cards, and a scoring marker in their respective color. One thing to remember is to rem remove whatever lot you started from the deck since it's technically been bought. On each player's turn, there are two options, acquire land and or build or demolish and rebuild. If you choose the first option, you draw from the lot card pile and place a worker on a lot within the indicated district, aka the color. If you choose to do so, you can also place a skyscraper to score points. If you happen to run out of available workers on your turn, you can still build, just not get any new lots. Once a player has built one of the four legendary skyscrapers such as the MetLife or Woolworth buildings, he can place his king token down to make claim. If the player chooses to demolish or rebuild on their turn, they can tear down all skyscrapers that fall under the plot he or she wants to build on. Those skyscrapers cannot be used again, however no points are lost for those builds. Demolition is a tricky thing though, so there are rules that must be met before you can demolish other skyscrapers. The new skyscraper you wish to build must be larger than the footprint of the current skyscrapers there. For example, taking over four lots as opposed to two lots. If lots of land are left free after demolition, you must place a worker on each of those lots. If you don't have enough workers, you can't go through with your demolition plans. The first player to reach 50 points mark wins the game. Overall, we love the fun theme of this game, which also requires a lot of strategy to move about the board and strategically build, rebuild, while also keeping enough of your workers freed up for demolition to outsmart your opponents. We also like that in addition to the basic form of play, an additional rulebook is included to further that strategy of gameplay, such as beginning the game only building bronze level skyscrapers and working your way up to the gold level after hitting certain point levels, or incorporating special bonus challenge cards to shake up the game. With all these moving pieces, the gameplay is still simple enough to understand the basics of play, but can be made complex enough to make for more long form games. This is a 2 to 4 player game for ages 8 and up from Blue Orange Games. For more on where to buy and current prices, find us at TTPM and subscribe to our YouTube channels for more great reviews every day.